Section 1 Introduction We're going to delve into the fascinating world of large language models, LLMs. These models, despite being trained to predict the next token in a sequence, have shown an impressive range of capabilities. This has led to some interesting questions about what these models are actually learning. One theory is that LLMs are simply learning a vast array of correlations, but don't really have a comprehensive model or understanding of the underlying data. Another theory suggests that LLMs, in the process of compressing data, actually learn more compact, coherent, and interpretable models of the generative process underlying the training data, essentially forming a model of the world. There's evidence to support this second theory. For example, Transformers trained to play the board game Othello have been shown to learn explicit representations of the game state. Other studies have shown that LLMs can track Boolean states of subjects within the context and have representations that reflect perceptual and conceptual structure in spatial and color domains. Understanding how LLMs model the world is crucial for reasoning about the robustness, fairness, and safety of current and future AI systems. In this study, we're going to explore this question by attempting to extract an actual map of the world from an LLM. We've constructed six datasets containing the names of places or events with corresponding space or time coordinates that span multiple spatiotemporal scales. These include locations within the whole world, the United States, and New York City, as well as the death year of historical figures from the past 3,000 years, the release date of art and entertainment from 1950s onward, and the publication date of news headlines from 2010 to 2020. We then trained linear regression probes on the internal activations of the names of these places and events at each layer to predict their real-world location or time. Our experiments revealed that models build spatial and temporal representations throughout the early layers before plateauing at around the model halfway point, with larger models consistently outperforming smaller ones. We also found that these representations are linear, fairly robust to changes in prompting, and unified across different kinds of entities, such as cities and natural landmarks. One possible explanation for our results is that the model only learns a mapping from place to a country, for example, and it is the probe that actually learns the global geometry of how these different groups are geospatially or temporally related. To investigate this, we conducted a series of robustness checks to understand how the probes generalize across different data distributions and how probes trained on the PCA components perform. Our findings suggest that the probes memorize the absolute positioning of these groups, but that the model does have representations which reflect the relative positioning. In other words, the probe learns the mapping from model coordinates to human interpretable coordinates. Finally, we used our probes to find individual neurons which activate as a function of space or time, providing strong evidence that the model is truly using these features. To enable our investigation, we constructed six datasets of names of entities with their respective location or occurrence in time, each at a different order of magnitude of scale. For each dataset, we included multiple types of entities, such as both populated places like cities and natural landmarks like lakes, to study how unified representations are across different object types. We also maintained or enriched relevant metadata to enable analyzing the data with more detailed breakdowns, identify sources of trained test leakage, and support future work on factual recall within LLMs. We also attempted to deduplicate and filter out obscure or otherwise noisy data. Our spatial datasets included place names within the world, the United States, and New York City. Our temporal datasets consisted of the names and occupations of historical figures who died between 1000 BC and 2000 AD, the titles and creators of songs, movies, and books from 1950 to 2020, and New York Times news headlines from 2010 to 2020. Section Summary In this section, the authors discuss the hypothesis that large language models, LLMs, learn coherent and interpretable models of the generative process underlying the training data. They construct six datasets containing names of places or events with corresponding space or time coordinates and use linear regression probes to predict their real-world location or time. The probing experiments reveal that LLMs build spatial and temporal representations in the early layers, with larger models outperforming smaller ones. The authors also find evidence that the probes memorize absolute positioning but the model has representations that reflect relative positioning. Section. Data Preparation. Let's simplify and paraphrase the given text. We conducted our experiments using a series of auto-regressive transformer language models called LAMA2, which range from 7 billion to 70 billion parameters.
For each dataset, we processed every entity name through the model, sometimes with a short prompt, and recorded the hidden state's activations on the last entity token for each layer. This resulted in an activation dataset for each layer, corresponding to a set of n entities. To investigate if the models represent spatial and temporal information, we used a standard technique called probing. This involves fitting a simple model on the network activations to predict a target label associated with the input data. Specifically, we used an activation dataset and a target containing either time or two-dimensional latitude and longitude coordinates. We then applied linear ridge regression to fit the data, resulting in a linear predictor. If this predictor performs well on out-of-sample data, it suggests that the base model can decode temporal and spatial information linearly in its representations. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that the model uses these representations. We fine-tune this process using efficient cross-validation on the probe training set. To assess our probe's performance, we used standard regression metrics such as R-squared and Spearman rank correlation on our test data. We also calculated the proximity error for each prediction, which is the fraction of predictions closer to the target point than the actual prediction. This metric is particularly useful for spatial data, where absolute error metrics can be misleading due to local differences in desired precision. We first asked whether the models represent time and space at all, where in the model they do so, and whether the representation quality changes with model scale. We train probes for every layer of LAMA2 for our space and time datasets. Our results showed that both spatial and temporal features can be recovered with a linear probe, and these representations become more accurate with increasing model scale. The representations also improve in quality throughout the first half of the model's layers before plateauing. The dataset with the worst performance was the New York City dataset, likely due to the relative obscurity of most of the entities compared with other datasets. However, the largest model performed best on this dataset, suggesting that large models could eventually form detailed spatial models of individual cities. There is growing evidence in the interpretability literature that features within neural networks are represented linearly. However, these results are usually for binary or categorical features, unlike the naturally continuous features of space or time. To test whether spatial and temporal features are represented linearly, we compared the performance of our linear ridge regression probes with more expressive nonlinear probes. Our results showed minimal improvement using nonlinear probes, suggesting that space and time are also represented linearly, despite being continuous. We also investigated whether these spatial or temporal features are sensitive to prompting, i.e., whether the context can influence the recall of these facts. To study this, we created new activation datasets where we added different prompts to each of the entity tokens. We found that explicitly prompting the model for the information, or giving disambiguation hints, made little to no difference in performance. However, random distracting tokens significantly degraded performance. Capitalizing the entities also degraded performance, likely because it interferes with the entity's identification. The one modification that improved performance was probing on the period token following a headline, suggesting that periods contain some summary information of the sentences they end. Section Summary The authors conducted experiments using the LAMA2 series of language models to investigate the representation of spatial and temporal information. They found that linear probes can recover spatial and temporal features, and these representations improve with larger model scales. The authors also tested the sensitivity of these features to different prompts and found that explicit prompting and disambiguation hints had little effect on performance, while random distracting tokens degraded performance. Section 4 Robustness Checks In the previous section, we demonstrated that the exact timing or location of various events or places can be accurately determined from the internal workings of the later stages of language learning models, LLMs. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that the model uses the feature direction learned by the probe. The probe could be learning a simpler combination of features that the model actually uses. To illustrate a potential issue with our findings, let's consider the task of representing the entire world map. If the model has a nearly perpendicular binary feature for being in a specific country, one could create a high-quality latitude or longitude probe by adding these perpendicular feature vectors for each country with a coefficient equal to the latitude or longitude of that country. If a place is in only one country, such a probe would place each entity at the center of its country, 
However, in this case, the model doesn't actually represent space, only country membership. It's only the probe that learns the geometry of the different countries from the explicit supervision. To better differentiate these cases, we analyze how the probes generalize when we exclude specific blocks of data. We train a series of probes, each time excluding one country, state, borough, century, decade, or year for various datasets. We then test the probes on the excluded block of data. We find that while the performance suffers, especially for the spatial datasets, it's still better than random. The probe correctly generalizes by placing the points in the correct relative position but not in their absolute position. This suggests that the probes are extracting features explicitly learned by the model, but are memorizing the transformation from model coordinates to human coordinates. However, this doesn't completely rule out the underlying binary features hypothesis. We've been assuming that the model represents the space or time coordinates of different types of entities in a unified manner. However, a latitude probe could also be the sum of different directions for the latitudes of cities and for the latitudes of natural landmarks. We distinguish these hypotheses by training a series of probes where we exclude all points of a particular entity class. The results suggest that the probes largely generalize across entity types, with the main exception of the entertainment dataset. Despite being linear, our probes still have a large number of learnable parameters, allowing them to memorize a lot of information. As additional evidence, we train probes with significantly fewer parameters by projecting the activation datasets onto their largest principal components. The test results for probes trained on each model and dataset over a range of values show that the Spearman correlation increases much more rapidly with increasing values than the R-squared value. This suggests that the model explicitly represents space and time as these features must account for enough variance to be in the top dozen principal components. However, the probe requires more parameters to convert from the model's coordinate system to literal spatial coordinates or timestamps. We also observed that the first several principal components clustered the different entity types within the dataset, explaining why more than a few are needed. Section Summary The authors conducted robustness checks to validate their findings. They analyzed how the probes generalize when specific blocks of data are held out, finding that while generalization performance suffers, it is still better than random. They also train probes with fewer parameters by projecting the activation datasets onto their principal components, observing that the model explicitly represents space and time, but the probe requires more parameters to convert from the model's coordinate system to literal spatial coordinates or timestamps. Section 5 Space and Time Neurons In this section, we delve deeper into the concept of space and time neurons. Our previous findings hinted at the existence of these neurons, but we didn't have direct evidence. To confirm this, we looked for individual neurons that had a strong correlation with the direction learned by the probe. In simpler terms, we were searching for neurons that either received or sent information in a direction similar to the probe's learned direction. Our findings showed that when we mapped the activation datasets onto the weights of the most similar neurons, these neurons were indeed highly sensitive to the actual location of entities in space or time. This means that there are specific neurons within the model that can predict feature probes quite accurately. These neurons responded to all types of entities in our datasets, which further supports our claim that these representations are unified. If we consider probes trained with explicit supervision as the maximum extent to which a model can represent these spatial and temporal features, then the performance of individual neurons can be seen as the minimum extent. We generally expect features to be distributed in a superimposed manner which makes individual neurons not the ideal level for analysis. However, the existence of these individual neurons, which were only supervised by next token prediction, strongly suggests that the model has learned and utilizes spatial and temporal features. Our research is inspired by previous studies into how deep learning systems form interpretable models of their data-generating process. The most clear-cut demonstrations have come from models trained on chess and Othello games, which were shown to have explicit representations of the board and game state. Other work has shown that these representations are also linear. Our work is unique in considering continuous facts. We have provided evidence that large language models, LLMs, learn linear representations of space and time that are unified across entity types and fairly robust to prompting. We also found that there are individual neurons that are highly sensitive to these features.
This suggests that next token prediction alone is enough for learning a literal map of the world given sufficient model and data size. However, many questions remain. While we showed that it's possible to linearly reconstruct a sample's absolute position in space or time, and that some neurons use these probe directions, the true extent and structure of spatial and temporal representations remain unclear. We hypothesize that the most standard form of this structure is a discretized hierarchical mesh, where any sample is represented as a linear combination of its nearest basis points at each level of granularity. Our findings also suggest future work on extracting representations in the model's coordinate system rather than trying to reconstruct human interpretable coordinates. Another challenge in our analysis is the existence of many entities in our dataset which the model is unaware of, contaminating our activation datasets. We would be interested in methods that can identify when a model recognizes a particular entity beyond simply prompting for specific facts and risking hallucinations. Finally, we note that the representation of space and time has received much more attention in biological neural networks than artificial ones. Place and grid cells in particular are among the most well-studied in the brain, as we expect it to be productive source of inspiration for future work on LLMs.